Matt here, Atlas Precision Consulting. In today's video, we're gonna keep talking about job contract pricing. We're gonna go over the basics today, uh, and then we can go into depth and some other topics later. Uh, I have a job contract pulled up here that I've already created previously. To create one, you have to assign a corporate address ID. Now, this is not a customer ID, it's the corporate address ID. Most people in their system, it's a one-to-one -one relationship, uh, but there are some customers that have uh, customers that have a parent company that have multiple companies underneath it that all share the same corporate ID, but maybe they have different customer IDs. Uh, so it's it, so it's important to remember that. Also, if you do put a corporate ID for somebody that has multiple customers, it allows you to to use the same contract for multiple customers in their ship twos. Um, the other thing that is required for you to create one is obviously you have to give it a contract number. This is a manually inputted thing, just like the description. Uh, the record ID is what's auto-populated in the system once you save and create the record. Um, the start date will default to the date that you are creating it. End date you will need to fill in. Um, inactive, obviously, is a soft delete, we'll turn it off. Consignment contract, not gonna go into this video, that's a whole nother topic. Extended description is just a place for some more information. We're gonna skip over some of this other stuff, I'll try to come back to it. Now, I do have one line added on here just to show you. You put your item ID in there. You can have different unit measures. Pricing method's the big important one. If you set it to price, it enables this price field and you can come in here and you can type in whatever price you want it to be. Or the most, the other more common one is to change it to source. And this will make the source and multiplier fields now interactive and you'll notice price is now grayed out. Even if there's a price in there, if I have this set to source, it ignores that price. So in here, you would come in here and say, oh, I have it set to supplier list price and I wanna give them 30% off of that. So I would change my multiplier to 0.7. Now, the nice thing about using the source method instead of the price, the price is hard coded. The multiplier one, if you just go update your supplier list price, you don't have to update your contracts because it's just gonna use the multiplier. Um, you have max quantity. Uh, this will allow you to set a limit on how many they're allowed to purchase. If you have it to zero, there is no limit. Um, start date, end date don't necessarily have to be the same as above. They are not required, but for some reason, if you had multiple lines on here that you had different start and end dates or expiration dates, you could set those up here. Just keep in mind, they have to be within the same window as the header start and end date. You can't have it going after the end date of the header or before the start. Um, Status is pretty common sense. You have active, delete, and inactive. I will say that I I haven't really seen a case where delete and inactive do anything differently. Uh, obviously, both of those will not allow those items to be used on contracts. Uh, the last one, or last two fields I wanna call out dinner at the bottom is the source location. You can enter a source location ID. So if you only want uh, this contract to be valid purchased from uh, a source location, you can make that so now it's not sales location, it's source location. It's wherever the items are coming out of. Uh, quantity ordered is not an editable field, it's just information. Um, you can come into a contract at any time and see how many units of those items that they have purchased. Uh, one quick note on the items, you have to list it by items. You can't do groups of items, you can't do product groups, you can't do discount group, none of that. It's all based on individual items. If you wanna do groups of items, you really have to go with the uh, price library page book scenario um the other thing i want to call out here real quick is the customer ship to tab uh if this customer had multiple ship twos i would have to hit a plus symbol put the customer id in and put the other ship to id in it doesn't automatically do it uh, i will tell you from personal experience in my previous job uh we had atlas create a business rule for us that when we created a ship to we could check a box and when we hit save it would go out and find any open contracts for that customer and insert those ship to records into the job contract just made it really uh, a lot simpler for us since a lot of our customers had hundreds of ship twos and and we wanted to give them the contracts over all of those last thing i'll cover uh i know this video is going long you'll notice there's a bunch of tabs down here grayed out i will say this some of these are only enabled when you enter in the ship to id for example so i'll come in here and again it can be any ship to id that's on this tab and you'll notice that different other bins or excuse me tabs have now uh, become active i'm not going to go into those in this video um, but if you guys want to see more videos on job contracts maybe a little bit more uh, detail on some of these topics put a comment down below Make sure you like and subscribe, and as always, Atlas is here for your P21 needs.